Split Squat, Front Foot Elevated, Assisted. Front Foot Elevated Split Squat is one of my favorite unilateral lower body exercises. It offers many benefits, including structural balance, knee health, hip flexibility, ankle flexibility, and lower body strength gains. In this variation, we're using a stick to assist the movement. If you're struggling with balance, strength, flexibility, or even split squat depth, this assisted version can help. The height of the elevated surface depends on your lower body strength and flexibility. The lower the elevation, the greater the strength and flexibility demands. To perform the assisted split squat, place one foot on the elevated surface and the other on the floor with the feet roughly hip width apart. Imagine standing on tram tracks, not a tight rope, as this will affect the balance. The length of the lunge will depend on your hip flexibility and the elevation height, and you'll need to experiment with this to find what works best for you. The tighter your hips, the closer the rear foot will need to be to the step, and potentially you'll need to bend the rear knee a little more to get good depth in the split squat. Hold the stick in the opposite hand to the foot that is on the step. Place the stick to the side of the step and in line with the heel of the front foot. This allows you to use the stick for balance and stability while also being able to use your upper body strength to assist the movement. A common mistake in the split squat is not keeping the hips square. As we move down and forward in the split squat, the goal is to stretch the hip flexors of the rear leg. If you have tight hip flexors, the body tries to move around this by rotating the hips away from the stretch. This might allow you to move deeper into the split squat, but it fails to stretch the hip flexors, which is one of the major benefits of doing split squats in the first place. To fix this, ensure the rear hip is internally rotated and the hips are square. The heel of the rear foot must be elevated and both the knuckles of the pinky toe and big toe stay connected to the floor. If the pinky toe knuckle lifts off the floor, chances are the hips are not square and the body is moving around the stretch. Focus on internally rotating the rear hip, contracting the rear glute, and pushing the knuckles of the pinky toe and big toe to the floor. From the top, the movement is both forward and down simultaneously, with the intention to push the knee over the toes. If you can't get the knee over the toes, you'll need to decrease the stance to width or increase the height of the elevation. As you move forward and down, you must actively contract the hamstring to pull deeper into the squat and close the angle between the calf and the hamstring of the front leg. How close can you get your butt to the heel of your front foot? The front knee must trap over the toes and not collapse inwards. Use the glute to abduct the leg and keep the knee tracking over the toes. At the bottom of the movement, the heel of the front foot stays connected to the elevated surface. Do not allow the heel of the front foot to lift. You also want to keep the torso as upright as possible and feel a deep stretch in the front of the rear hip. This is where the stick can help. Use your upper body strength to push the stick into the floor and maintain an upright torso. Once at the bottom, adding a pause anywhere from one to 10 seconds is a good way to increase the stretch. While in the pause, check to make sure the front knee is over the toe, the knee isn't collapsing inwards, the heel of the front foot is flat on the elevated surface, your torso is upright, the back leg is as straight as possible, the hips are square, the heel of the rear foot is off the floor, the rear hip is internally rotated and the knuckles of the big toe and pinky toe of the rear foot are pushing into the floor. There's a lot to think about. After holding the pause, reverse the movement by moving back and up simultaneously to fully extend the front knee and return to the starting position. Use your breath to help stabilize the movement. As you move down and forward, breathe in through the nose and deep into your belly as you try to expand 360 degrees. During the pause at the bottom, the goal is to maintain midline tension while taking shallow breaths. Then, slowly exhale through the mouth as you stand up. Perform the prescribed number of repetitions on one side before switching and repeating on the opposite side. Give it a try and see how you go. If you've got questions, please leave them in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.